Waiver strategy is going to be important this week more than ever, and Devon A. Chain is going to be at the top of that list. Look, Devon A. Chain is not going to score 52. Oh, insert Schefter tweet. Uh, A. Chan. Devon A. Chan is... You can't just change your name. He's not going to score 52 points every week. The Finns are not going to score 70 points a week. So... And that probably, actually, I will say they'll probably never do that again. That's probably never going to happen again. I would venture to say Devon Achan, Achan probably never going to have that big of a week again. That's a career week. Uh, they're going to be a running back by committee. That was proven yesterday by the carry splits. Uh, Devon Achan had 22 touches. Mostert had 20 touches. They were essentially splitting him up. Not to mention Achan was getting the garbage time. And it was garbage time about halfway through that game. But he was getting all the garbage time. And he ripped great. off a 70-yard touch. It looked fantastic. So you absolutely have to be wavering Devon Achan this week because even if you don't like him, he is absolutely going to be worth something very valuable to your league mate. So he is the number one trending player on Sleeper right now for waivers. He is somebody we're going to want to add. Jeff Wilson is going to come back eventually. You also have the... Ahmed, Ahmed guy that was doing fairly well. <laughs> now we are going to say this. We are adding him. We are going to lean towards selling him because we think you can get some ridiculous prices right now. Uh, now, the one, there are some cases to be made for keeping him. Yeah. We can so make don't it, crap we'll, on us. So, so don't crap on us. We'll make that case in another video for waivers purposes only. Absolutely, you're adding Devon yes, Chan Adam, to your sure. roster this week. Yes. And the next guy we're going to have here is Tank Dell. Obviously, oh, we were wrong about Tank. We Dell. were wrong about Tank Dell. We Sorry. were right about the seven of the the eight other waiver ads that are do not ads that we had last week. Tank Dell was the one that we were wrong about. He had a second good week. We questioned his consistency. We oh, we we <laughs> wondered if he would be able to do this for a second straight week. He did. And he did twenty five points. Good for him. We were off wrong. of five receptions, one hundred and fifty yards off of five receptions. He does have the big playability that was really nice. Um, he's a real deal. Great separator as well, and he's tiny, and, and he transcends his tininess. So C.J. Stroud throwing the ball 40 times a game, and Tank is looks like his potential best receiver. We'll see still if Nico Collins can bounce back from a disappointing week, but at this point, Tank Dell is still – he only has 48% roster ship, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. on Sleeper, according to Sleeper. So there are <laughs> half of your leagues that you're in right now where Tank Dell is not being rostered. So please go, don't, please go pick him up. Could or, be matchup dependent with him and Nico Collins, too. It yeah. could. And we wouldn't be surprised if we're still in it being right about Tank Dell, honestly, but we're not going to say that now. We'll take our L for now. Definitely well, pick him up. Uh, but yes. I, will, I will say – the sleeper is the highest roster ship by far. When you're looking at other league formats on other platforms, lower. So yeah. even even though we told you not to get Tank Dell last week, it's not really too late. He wasn't a good way route at the time. Now he is. He's still available. Go get Tank Dell this week for sure. Yeah, after him, we have Adam Thielen. And it's a little bit crazy to me that Adam Thielen wasn't rostered after last week. And, and the same thing, Adam Thielen is really, he's not a heavily rostered player, even after having such a good Two-week span here, 23 targets across the last two weeks, and it's pretty obvious he's the focal point of the Panthers' offense. I don't know what that's worth, but like I said, 23, 23 targets across the first two in these last two weeks, and he had 31.5 points. Yes, that was a week where Andy Dalton threw like 58 times. He, yeah. he dang near threw 60 pass attempts, and so Adam Thielen was able to eat. But I think the rest of the year, I mean, we've seen these last two weeks that they intend to use him. He gets open. He knows how to catch the ball. He's the most experienced receiver there. He's probably the focal point of that offense, and a wide receiver one on any offense in the NFL is worth owning. Waiver ads don't mean keep for the rest of the year, but for the next two See weeks how or however out. long Bryce Young is out, you want to be starting Adam Thielen every single week. We can reevaluate once Bryce Young comes back. I mean, bottom line is, with 31.5 points this week, he won you a matchup probably. Yep. Yes. And that makes him worth rostering even if it's for two weeks so we're absolutely picking up adam thielen cj Stroud's gonna be next we're gonna have a quarterback on here we're gonna have a rookie quarterback on here and it's not anthony richardson which is kind of surprising but when you're looking at cj Stroud's passing volume he's throwing the ball 40 times a game right now so the volume is otherworldly ridiculous he has looked really really good at throwing the football which is just amazing and he could end up being a QB1 for the rest of the season when you're looking at how he's been able to develop, how he's been able to become more accurate, how his receivers are now starting to step into their own. See Tank Dell, see Nico, Nico, Nico Collins. For now these receivers are letting him produce. He was the QB11 this week. He was the QB13 last week. He is already the best Ohio State quarterback of all time, which is just wild to think about. Uh, but we don't count Joe Burrow as an Ohio State quarterback because technically, Who would? technically he was. Correct. But C.J. Stroud, again, I, if C.J. Stroud continues, he, at, at the absolute worst, 
he is a backup quarterback in your fantasy leagues. If you're rostering two quarterbacks in in all your leagues and one of and CJ Shaw's on the waivers, that's, pick him up. I, I mean, absolutely. That's yeah. the very very worst. We love CJ Stroud. We think he could end up being a very good option for the rest of the season. Yeah, and the next guy we're going to have here is Josh Palmer, one of the two Chargers players that we're going to have in this video. But with Josh Palmer through three games, Herbert has 40 pass attempts per game. Uh, that's just like a, Stroud. That's a little bit of volume, just just a little bit. Uh, no, that's a lot of volume to go around. And in games with eight-plus targets in 2022, Palmer averaged 16.2 points per game. Well, Domain guys, that's not realistic because he isn't going to get eight plus targets. That was per nine. Game. That well, was nine that's games. true. Before Mike Williams was out for the season, now Mike Williams is out for the season. Like that, that's what they fear it to be. Probably an ACL. No, he tore his ACL. He's done. And yeah, so confirmed. Jo- yes, he, it's confirmed. He he's out. Mike Williams is done. He's made a glass. <laughs> Josh Palmer is the next guy up, at least for the foreseeable future. You have to give the benefit of the doubt to the veteran in that offense. And while we are saying that the other wide receiver, the younger rookie in Quentin Johnson, is also a waiver ad, we are going to lean. Prioritize Josh Palmer now. Yes. Because there is probably a chance that Quentin Johnson, even though he is a good waiver pickup, will lay some duds for the next couple weeks at least because he is still developing as a wide receiver. And he's going to have to grow into his own. I mean, they drafted him for a reason in the first round, but until then, Josh Palmer is going to pick up the slack. Yeah, absolutely. And when he doesn't pick up the slack, you have their first round talent to pick up the slack behind him. Quentin Johnson has disappointed this year, let's be honest. Uh, He has a season-high 27% snap share, and uh, yeah, he's not looked great. So when you're looking at waiver ads, Quentin Johnson is someone that we're avoiding, right? So we're looking at the other guys around. We're saying, like, I think Josh Palmer is going to produce more off the bat. Adam Thielen, you know, Devon... A Chan, I forgot. Oh, it's one of them. I always forget how to say it, man. Um, so Quentin Johnson, someone we're avoiding. However, you do need to look at the rest of the season in his outlook. If Josh Palmer goes down, if Keenan Allen goes down, then there's a pretty decent chance of that. He's dealt with injury last year. He's getting old. There's a pretty good Quentin Johnson is going to be forced into a bigger role. He's just not someone we're looking at rostering this early on in the season. Quentin Johnson is a top 10 trending player on sleeper right now in terms of ads. And a lot of people are going to point to Quentin Johnson's first three games, just like we just did, to some extent, to say that Quentin Johnson is going to be a non-factor this season. That's not necessarily true. It is possible that you see... Quentin Johnson come out and develop at the end. Of the, I mean, you could make the exact same case for Jackson Smith and Jigba guys. Like you're talking about guys that were drafted two or three picks apart. Mm-hmm. So with Quentin Johnson, he has a very, very good quarterback. Yeah. He has all the yeah. tools. Again, we've only seen him really in like three wide receiver sets so far. That's why his snap share is so low. So with that being said, his his snap share is absolutely going to go up. His opportunity is going to go up. We expect his points to go up as well. Yeah, we can say do not waver now while still liking his outlook for the end of the season because I think a lot of people go into this video and they're like, well, why don't you just pick up all of these guys and just stash them? Well, newsflash, your fantasy rosters don't have unlimited bench spots. Wow, there good is, point. There is trade-off. Well, well, I know. You would be surprised. It, you would be surprised how many people have said You'd that to us. Like, there is trade-off with every single player that you add off waivers because shocker you have to drop someone that is probably a relevant fantasy asset because he was on your roster to begin with so be wise with quentin johnson just just be wise with him now next guy that we're gonna have is marvin mims and that's you yeah uh mims great deep threat last week he showed that and he the had, week before and the week before it's 16.6 points last week he was on our do not waiver video Half and we have people in the return. comments saying oh these guys told you not to waiver marvin mims guess what we're gonna tell you this week don't waver him I, and I want you, I want Simon, you weren't here last week. We took the brunt of the crap. I want you to tell people why it's, I, I mean, you don't understand. And you, the, hey, the Pissy Broncos fans can get in the comments and cry about it if you want to. But the reality is. Go check the receipts. I love Marvin Mims as a prospect. If you want to go see our Dynasty channel, we love him. Did, yeah. Right? All three of us. All three of us. Second round pick for a reason. He's extremely talented. But his fantasy production this week was based on a special teams touchdown, right? He had three catches for 73 right. 73 yards, that's good. He's being a good deep threat. That's his role in the offense. Doesn't the fact that two weeks in a row, he's had, like, what, five catches for maybe 150 yards total. I don't have it right in front of me. I think, to me, that shows that his role in the offense is purely a deep threat. He's not going to be getting the volume, and volume is what equals sustainability. So, if you're looking for a flash in the pan, I guess he's Gabe Davis. We're not rostering Marvin Mims right now. I think there's better options, and we just told you all the better options. Asterisk, right now. These are week four waiver ads. If Jerry Judy gets hurt, different story. Yeah, absolutely. And and look, 
With Mims, yeah, we were wrong that he wouldn't produce two weeks in a row. You got us there. I was not anticipating them losing by 50. I was not anticipating him getting some garbage time special teams touchdowns. So, yeah, if you want to take your victory lap on that, you can, absolutely. But with Marvin Mims, again, we talk about it with Michael Pittman, guys like him. We look for targets because targets are the least volatile statistic that you can see in a receiver. So the guy that gets high-volume targets are the guys we're going to want to get. Marvin Mims is not getting high-volume targets. You can spend your roster spot on him now, or you can spend your roster spot on these guys that we've actually told you we're comfortable wavering. It's all about priority. You can look, feel free to waiver Marvin Mims if you want. Feel free to go against what we're saying because we are not always right. We saw that with Tank Dell. With that being said, we're telling you who we're avoiding. We are avoiding Marvin Mims at the moment. Yeah, and one of those high target guys that's off waivers that we would consider targeting even this week is Josh Downs, who is coming off of a 12 target legitimate volume awesome. week. And, and this is something where, honestly, I, do I think he's going to get 12 targets next game? Probably not. Do I think he gets could, could get seven or eight and yeah. maybe turn one of those into a touchdown or high yardage? And Absolutely. then guess what he's going to be? High priority waiver. High priority waiver. So you may want to try and get ahead if you already have some fringe guys on your roster that you're like, you know what, I think I'm going to drop them. If you can't get a, any other waiver guys, I mean, Josh Downs, according to Sleeper, his roster ownership right now is 12%. So like, he, you may not even have to make a waiver claim for him. Just do it after waiver's clear. And whoever you were or were not able to land, just go and get Josh Downs on top of that and get him before he becomes popular. He is, I think you're two, both of you, most owned... Yeah, he's receiver. up there on my, he's my most best owned ball. player in best ball. Yeah, so hopefully that pays off. But honestly, again, this is just something where we, for this waiver video, Josh Downs production in week three was enough for us to be sold on you going to pick him up if you feel convicted to. We're, this is not a hard go get him at all costs. We're just saying there is a chance that he starts producing even more and it would be good to get ahead of the crowd here. Seven targets, five targets, and 12 targets in his first three games. Uh, this is a guy that was a third round rookie, a guy that people said he doesn't have a chance to produce because he's in the third round, but now we see that we've got Guys Means like Tank Dell, Tank Dell guys like Nakua. Puka Nakua. I think with wide receivers, it's becoming a lot less draft capital dependent whether or not they produce. And the lower round guys are becoming, or they're having a higher hit rate at this point. So Yeah, uh, another guy who is just, talk about the volume. He's getting the volume. Jaden Reed through three weeks has 20 targets, and that's great. You know, the Packers offense has kind of struggled the last two weeks. And so he's, again, he's not one of these guys who's high priority. But I definitely think for the foreseeable future, at least, he's a guy who can add... Uh, eight points per game to your lineup. And, I mean, that's pretty decent. Honestly, I'd, I'd take Jaden Reed over Marvin Mims if we're talking. Easily. Uh, because I think any given week, he's going to offer you that floor. And as the season progresses, he's going to give you that ceiling. So he's someone who I'm not I'm not rushing to add him now, but I feel good about it. If I, if I get him on my roster, I feel fine about starting him if I have to. And I think he has a great outlook towards the end of the season. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's our waiver strategy for this week. Drop a like on the video if you were able to watch and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Those two things are free and they help us out so much. Flockfantasy.com slash domain is where all of our exclusives are. If you use code domain, you get put in our camp. You get everything we can offer you. So we appreciate you joining us over there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching today. We appreciate you so much. We will see you later.